Also, uh, come in my house, Mark. <laughs> Don't look at the dog. Walk. Step. Hey, how are you doing? Hold on, I'm not ready yet. Back up. <laughs> <laughs> Let me set up the scene here. Okay. <laughs> I'm a bad actor. It's okay. But this concept of Sorry, giving your friend your huh? guess, it's one thing to say, ignore my dog. I have no problem with that at all. I want to let you, but this, don't look at my dog. Don't move your, like, I'm Jewish. I'm going to talk with my hands, right? You can't tell me not to. So, don't talk with your hands. Don't get excited. That doesn't work that way. I come over, I'm happy to see you, I want to give you a hug, and I don't want a dog jumping on my back. So the dog has to learn to not jump in those real life experiences. Because no one's going to walk over your house and hey Linda, how are you? No. So, I'm going to walk up to you, you're going to be all excited. What I don't want you to do is do this. Because in my opinion, that's not fair. For now, eventually, if we can we can prove to yeah, we can prove to God on this as well. But unless that's your husband's jump jump off coming. No, he doesn't. Okay. So, and do we know that dogs are killed in shelters for jumping? We know that, right? They they flunk assess. Um, uh, Uh, the tests. So that's how bad it is, which is ridiculous because it's an easy fix. So what I'm going to do is, is your dog will be on a loose leash. I'm going to allow the dog to jump. I'm going to give a very firm sideways pop. Don't go up. A lot of people go up. Sometimes it's hard to go down. I just like to go pop. Not a pull, but a pop. That's why we want to make sure that we're like we're with the dog and the dog's not dragging us because then I'm pulling the dog. The dog might vocalize, so trainers always tell your clients, the dog might vocalize, 50% surprise, 50% probably, yes, there's some discomfort. But my theory is it should be uncomfortable to jump, because jump on one of my kids, like, the worst dog injury I've had was another Roddy, six months old, jumped on the guy's grandmother, she fell down, broke her arm, fractured her hips, $70,000 in uh, two months in uh, assisted living. I'm gonna jump. I've seen a lot of dog bites, but not $70,000. So, all right, here we go. So, I'll give you Scooter. Give me Scooter. Scooter. Hey, Scooter. hey, how are you doing? Hey, how are you doing? How are you doing? Hey, how are you doing? jumping, which I, I'm very outspoken on. If somebody here teaches that way, no disrespect. Ignore the jumping. No. Tell that to Tell that. This, I have a rule. It's called four-year-old grandmother rule. Would you tell a four-year-old to ignore a jumping dog? No. Would you tell your grandmother? No. Then why are you teaching? Tell the dog to sit. How many times does it jump on you before it sits? Would you tell a four-year-old, would you tell your grandmother? No. Turn your back on the dog. Very big mistake in my opinion. Very big mistake. So, to me, not even three seconds out of an 86,400 second day to stop a behavior, I won't take any day. Jumping is very dangerous. You kill the installs, kill in shelters. It's gonna, it's gonna harm somebody. So, now, can we tell the dog to eventually put a sit in there? Absolutely. Of course we can. So now, sit. Good. So now we could, but, but you've got to give me both. That jumping was wrong, this is good. Because if we only teach what's good, how does the dog know what's not good? How about the dog doesn't sit? 
So we can do both. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Yes, one at a time. Yes. Yes. So, yes, because we, we have to have that. And then both of them. Got it? Questions about that?